a 64-year-old, very obese patient with dyspnea. No wonder she's obese. But is this really her problem? Here is the echocardiogram. The peristernal window does not really give you very good image quality, so it's kind of difficult to see what the patient really has. But luckily, we do get better images from an apical approach. And here it is. We have a rather small left ventricle, which is hyperdynamic. We calculated ejection fraction. Ejection fraction was in the range of 70%, so it's almost hyperdynamic. What about the left atrium? It's enlarged somewhat. And what about the thickness of the septum? Well, if we measure the, the thickness here, we do have a thickness of approximately 40 millimeters, which means she has left ventricular hypertrophy. And no wonder, she also has hypertensive heart disease. But does that explain her dyspnea? Let's take a look at diastolic function. Here we can clearly see that the patient has a very high E wave and a low A wave with a relatively steep deceleration time. So this would point to the fact that the patient has diastolic dysfunction, probably restrictive filling pattern with elevated filling pressures. We can take a look at that as well. If we look at E to E prime, what do we get? An E to E prime of 25, which is rather high. So the diagnosis would be clear, right? She has diastolic dysfunction, which would explain her dyspnea. This is not the entire story. Let's perform a strain analysis in our patient. Did you expect such a poor strain? Well, in reality, you probably could have if you look at the launch tool function on the 2D image. Let me go back to the 2D image and you will see that the level of the mitral plane is not moving at all. So if you have some degree of experience, you will already realize that this must be a problem related to longitudinal function of the ventricle. But with the bullseye display, we can also see where the problem lies, especially in the basal segments of the myocardium. The global longitudinal strain is minus 12.4, which means she does not only have diastolic dysfunction, but also at least subclinical systolic dysfunction.